In this video, we are going to solve a more complex example of the Dijkstra algorithm to find the shortest path. So let's say the graph that is given to us looks like this. I'm going to make my source vertex as A. So with this, let's start our algorithm. So we have a set of explored and unexplored vertices. In the beginning, all the vertices are unexplored. Now, if you remember from the previous video, we had represented a vertex like this. We will have the vertex. Above it, first we have the distance. So the distance is going to be the minimum distance from the source to that vertex, given that the path being used only has explored vertices and we have the parent P. So let's see for the first time the distance from A to A is 0. Is there a path from A to B using no vertices? No, there does not exist a path like that so I'm going to give infinity. Similarly C, D, E, F and G do not have paths from A to them without using any vertices. So it's all going to have a distance of infinity. Now, I will take the vertex with the shortest distance and make it an explored vertex. Okay, now that I have explored A, which vertexes can I reach? So my unexplored vertexes are still B, C, D, E, F and G. Having explored A, there is a path AB. So, the distance of B is going to become 2. And what is the parent of B in this path? The parent of B in this path is A. Now I go to C. There is no path from A to C still. So, it is still infinity. Then I go to D. There is a path A to D using distance 1. So, I will put 1A here. Is there a path from A to E only using A? No. So it's still infinity. F is still infinity. G is still infinity. Now I will take that vertex with the shortest distance and make it explode. So there is A0. Then there is D1A. The unexplored vertexes are still B, C, E, F and G. Okay, now that I have explored D, is there a better path from A to B that goes through D? No, there is no path from D to B. So, I am going to keep that distance as it is. Now I check for C. Is there a path from D to C? Yes, there is a path with 2 which goes from D to C. So what I am going to do is, I am going to add 2 to the distance of D. Distance of D is 1. So the distance of C is going to become 2 plus 1 which gives me 3. 
3 is less than infinity, so I will update it. And the parent is going to be D. Now I will see for E. Is there a path from D to E? Yes, there is a path from D to E with distance 2. I will add 2 to the distance of its parent which is D. So the distance of E is going to be 2 plus the distance of D which is 1 which will give me a distance of 3. So E will have a distance of 3. 3 is less than infinity so I can update. Now I see F. Yes, there is a path from D to F. It has a distance of 8. So I will add 8 to the distance of D which is 1 giving me 9. Now I will go for G. The edge between D and G is 4. So I will add 4 to the distance of D which is 1. So I will have 5D. Now given this I am going to take the unexplored vertex with the shortest distance and make it explored. So I am going to explore B. So the unexplored vertexes remain C, E, F and G. Now that I have explored B, let me start with C. So now is there a path or is there an edge from B to C? No, there is no direct edge from B to C. So we are going to leave the distance of C as it is. Now I will see, is there a direct edge between B and E? Yes, there is an edge of 10. So what will the distance of E become? The distance of E will become 10 plus the distance of B. Well, distance of B is 2. So the distance of E will become 10 plus 2 which is going to be 12. Now is that distance of 12 less than 3? No. So we are not going to update it. Now let's go to F. Is there an edge from B to F? No. So we are going to retain we go to G. Is there an edge from B to G? No. So we will retain our distance. Now we will select that vertex with the minimum distance and bring it over to the explored side. Now we can either choose C or E. But in this example let's choose C first. So in our explored side now we have A, B, C and D and on our unexplored side we have E, F and G. Now we have just explored C. We take E. Is there a direct edge from C to E? No. So we are going to retain the distance of E. Is there a direct edge from C to F? Yes, there is a direct edge from C to F which is going to be having weight 5. So what could be the weight of F? 5 plus the weight of C. The weight of C is 3. So now what becomes the weight of F? 5 plus 3 you get 8. Is 8 less than 9? Yes, so we can update it. So we have 8 as our distance and our parent here is C. Now we come to G. Is there a direct edge from C to G? No. So we are going to retain the distance of G. Now we are going to take the unexplored edge with minimum distance and make it explored. So now we have as our unexplored edges or unexplored vertices F and G. Now we have just explored E. 
is there a direct edge between E and F? No, so we retain. Is there a direct edge between E and G? Yes, there is an edge of 6. So the distance of G could be 6 plus the distance of E, which is 6 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. Is 9 less than 5? No, so we are going to retain this 5D. Now we will take the minimum of these two and bring it over to the explored side. Now we have just explored G. Is there an edge from G to F? Yes, there is an edge which has 1 as its distance. So what could be the distance of F? 1 plus the distance of G. So it's 1 plus 5. So the distance of F could be 6. Is 6 less than 8? Yes. So we can update it. Now we bring F back to the explored side. With that, we finish exploring all the vertices. So now let's see what the paths we got are. So from our source A, we have to find the paths from to B, C, D, E, F and G. So let's take B. B has parent A. And this is going to be a cost of 2. Now let's take C. C is going to be our destination. C has parent D. Now we go to D. D has parent A. So this is going to have a cost of 3. Now we'll go to D. D has parent A. And that is going to be a cost of 1. Now let's see E. E is going to be our destination. Parent of E is D. Parent of D is A. This is going to have a cost of 3. Now we'll see F. I have F as my destination. Parent of F is G. Parent of G is D. Parent of D is A. This is going to have a cost of 6. Now I have G. Parent of G is D. Parent of D is A. This is going to have a cost of 5. So this is how the Dijkstra algorithm for shortest path is going to work.